friends, Joe Gatz, and I'm about to talk to Bana Wynn, also known as Opus Vitae. Hey. How's it going? Uh, good. How are you? I'm doing great. Yeah. Where are you right now in LA? Uh, yep. I live in Silver Lake in Los Angeles. Yeah. Cool. Um, but you're from Washington? I'm from Oregon? Portland, Oregon. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, very close to the yeah, Northwest. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's really <laughs> How long have you been in LA for? Um, I've been in LA, I think, for like about seven years now. Oh, okay. I've lived in California for quite a bit. Like um, after high school, instead of going to college, I ended up traveling Europe for like a year. And then I went back to Portland and I ended up visiting my friends in Santa Barbara and I just like did not want to stop partying at that point. So, so I went down to UCSB and I lived in Santa Barbara for four years. Yeah. Um, like you went down there like to go to school or just like hang out and party with just, your friends that were at school? Yeah, but I mean, the degree really wasn't partying. I mean, to be honest, like. Yeah. I, yeah. After I went to school for like two and a half years and I was like, I want to become a musician and paying more for school doesn't make sense. So I, I dropped out and like recorded an album instead. So tell me about your newest single. That song is a part of the, the grammar CLP that's going to come out very soon. Um, and that is an album that I wrote, um, wrote and recorded everything within a year so very much was just like sort of like a stream of consciousness writing um and when it came to carry the weight i think that was one of the later songs that i wrote and i wrote it at the i actually wrote it like uh, now kind of a while ago but um it i think it was i think it was like the fall that <laughs> the fall that i don't want to say this word but the guy who's the president right now uh -huh. that he got elected hmm. um that uh, how do i say this? so that record was like such a transitional record and that period of my life was so transitional and it was like kind of coming out of this like really low period and then actually transitioning up to like some happiness and contentment but also of the time and i i was feeling like a lot of anger um, so that kind of seeped its way into the song. Yeah. And um, I, I feel like my songwriting has like gone sort of two directions, like subject wise, like quite often I'll write about things that I've experienced myself in my life or like people close to me have experienced. And it's always been like a very like cathartic release for me. And um so that's one side and carry weight is not really that. And the other side is like, sometimes I'll write stuff and it's, it just comes completely subconsciously. Mm -hmm. And I don't really fully know what it means at the time until later on. And as I've gotten older, I've realized that like, I thought I was like predicting my future, but essentially what the songs are is they become manifestations because like your thoughts turn into things. Yes. Kind of. that's so so I've realized now when I do that, I'm just going to write about good things. Yeah, no, well, this is something that's true. It's like, you know, when you're joking or say something out loud sarcastically, your brain can't tell the difference. So like, it's going right. to, basically it believes like what you're saying, like yeah. not to make it like your brain is like a little person in there or anything, but like, yeah. So I think that, yeah, manifestation of, you know your thoughts is like a real thing and i think that yeah. you know if you hear yourself saying like negative things you're going to believe it yeah for sure love is easy you know yeah so with with that song i i really liked like the the balance and the maybe balance isn't the right word but the 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 dynamics of like the vibe in it where like the verses are like to me they feel like a warm hug and then like, and like the choruses the... are like totally a different vibe and they like kind of yeah. drop yeah and it's yeah. like to me it's like the little like dips of like 
chaos that like come into your life and then it's like the more you focus on it and then it and then it just like completely spirals out of control at the end um and wow, I, so and i definitely uh experienced that in my life shortly after i wrote that song really <laughs> oh yeah, yeah like so. how so um i i had a relationship that like started really well and then like it and I didn't understand at the time until now, but it was like, we both like latched onto this like negative thing. Mm -hmm. And, and it just like, it like totally blew up and both of us were like, Oh, I don't know. So, I, yeah, no, yeah. I understand. Oh, I wanted to ask you the music video for it. Um, was that your creative direction who came up with that? And uh, why? Oh, that, so that is, that was originally just made for our live show as a projection in the background. Essentially like built this like crazy uh, Ableton setup where like everything was like hooked into it and the computer was like telling everything to like change to the right sound at the right part. That's crazy. It was, it, it's basically like you did that? Yeah, it's the same setup that St. Vincent uses live, essentially like a, a mimic of it. Like, Are you good with technology? Now uh i guess i am now <laughs> uh, yeah so i so i figured that out this is all getting to the video mm -hmm. i promise um yeah so i put that all together and then once i had that i was like all right i did that and then like every single show i was like i need to do something new and crazy and i was like oh, i should add visuals for the next show and it was like our first headlining show so i was like i need visuals and i need every single one to be unique and they all need to match up exactly with what we're playing on every single song. And I'm going to design them all. And I have two weeks. <laughs> oh my God. So I like learned how to use after effects. Nice. And in two weeks, like first I was just like making little squares, like moving around. And then I was like, Ooh, this is even cooler if I like start splicing the other footage and then like filtering it and like putting multiple footage over each other. That's essentially what the video is. is like, it's all that stuff. So that's so. where that came from. Yeah. That's so cool. What do you, like, I'm just curious what you consider your sort of genre of music. I know some people hate to answer that question, but I'm curious. Uh, to me, it's very like song by song and um i i i have like put a <laughs> a little thought into like how i want to like see myself like as an artist and i think like versatility is really important to me because i i like a lot of different things um so when it comes to genre like yeah like it really depends on the song and the especially now since the the gramercy record i've already written it and i've started writing more stuff like there's been like such a hard split in the kind of songs I've been writing. Like I started writing stuff that was like way more like electronic and like just, you know, just like using like a ton of 808s and, and like programming with Ableton and like fully going modern. And yeah. then I like a number of months ago, I just like picked up my first acoustic guitar I've ever played. And I was like, I just want to write like really simple folk songs and write like classic songs that don't have any like yeah frosting and sparkles that are they're just like good songs yeah and there's none of that other bullshit on there um and so i've been doing both at the same time and and that's been like really cool so i was i yeah when i think that about artists really cool. i think like i think about like someone like beck who like he can do whatever he wants yeah totally. and i'm like i'm like that's the shit yeah that's yeah, that's how I, um, how do I say this without saying pretentious? That's how I want to see myself and, I, uh, and, and really actually do see myself. That's how you're, you know, like manifesting into the future yeah, of yourself. Exactly. I, well, I think the, the most important thing is truth. Mm -hmm. Like you, wherever you are at, that's, 
that is what you're able to channel. Like as an artist, like you're not, you're essentially like the idea of like being a creator and creation is it's not really coming from you. You're essentially like a, a radio Channeling. transmitter for something else flowing through. So if you're in a really good place, then you should be writing from that place. If you're in a really bad place, then you, then that's what you're connected with. So it's like, if you're trying to write like a happy song when you're not happy, it's just never going to come out right. And so it's like, just getting out of the way is like the most important thing and 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 really like enjoying the process and enjoying what you make i think that's like like hands down like that always has to be the first priority and that's like something i've very much solidified for myself that i've always made the best and my best music when i was just doing it for me like right you know, yeah so. of course of course yeah well do you feel like um you know, since you've been doing, you know, pursuing music as your, you know, thing, do you think that there's been times that you've had to sort of like try and, or been told to write songs differently, like, and like felt like, you know, pressured by the industry or, um, there's so many things that, you know. Um, yes, in a way, but that pressure was always, it, it always came from within ultimately. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I think that pressure is like perceived in the, in the sense that like we all make our own decisions mm -hmm. and it, if you choose to listen to someone else, that's ultimately your decision. Um, and yeah, and I've, and there's been a number of times I've done that in the past. And I think that comes from a place of insecurity Mm -hmm. um and not really yeah not being conf confident with like who you are and what you want to make and like and for me like the the Gramercy record and like a song like Carry the Weight like that was like one of the first times in my life where I was like I'm gonna make whatever the fuck I want to make and I like the song and and that's it end of story and that's it's like the best stuff I've made so yeah like that's absolute confirmation that like that is the route to go and and there have been other times in the past where I'm like, I should make something like this because I think these people will like it. And like, this will give me the best chance of this. And, and it, it makes for something that's, it's just, it's just not as pure and it's not as true. And, totally. and ultimately you don't get the results you want to anyways. So it's like, you might as well just make something you really like. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I mean, you just put that, all of that into like really good words so yeah, i can tell you a, you're a songwriter as a listener you can feel you can feel when an artist does that like of course i think that especially happens over a course of an artist's career like like you hear their first few records and they're really pure and then like all this outside pressure it gets comes into in. it yeah yeah and it's not really that they've changed as a person it's just that they've given up on who they really are right as, to other people and we all feel that and then we're like eh. yeah so so when's the album come out um well it's supposed to come out in may but i think it'll be a little bit later than that um yeah probably, maybe like june cool. yeah nice so soon i th we have two more singles so we're gonna do one more which i think is like the the single single from Ooh, the record. i'm excited to hear it then Awesome. Um, yeah. And then, and then there's one more song that honestly is like the song I'm most proud of on the record, which is the closer of the record. And it's called the end of the road. And it's like, it's, <laughs> it's definitely like the most epic thing I've ever written. And I, I wrote it after, cause I, I literally was like, I need a closer for this record. And I somehow at like three 30 in the morning, I found, this video of uh, Nils Fram playing Says. Do you know Nils Fram? No. Um, I don't he's, think so. he's, I, I, he's kind of like like modern classical, but he he has this one song where like he has like a Juno keyboard and it's just like this arpeggiation and it just keeps going and building. And he's like building it for like seven minutes. And I was like, I want to make something like that. And so I wrote the song that it kind of sounds like M83 meets like Cigarose. And then I'm like essentially like ranting about the environment over 
<laughs> um, and then it just, like, it just, like, fucking explodes at the end, and it's, like, That sounds so really, weird. really cool. Yeah. So, so, like, do you think that you get, in, you know, obviously, you get inspiration for, like, your songs, like, from your environment, mostly? Like, like how that, do you think that's how the songs, like, come about in your brain? Like, things like that going on, you know? Or like, yeah, whatever makes me feel, you know, whatever, wherever there's passion, whether it's, yeah, I mean, whether it's relationships or friends or like, um, yeah, or like that last song, like literally about, about climate change. Yeah. So, nice. So it'll be out in the fall, you said? That'll be out in the fall. Yeah. I'm going to have a ton of music coming out. Yeah, the record, and then I'm going to have another EP. And then I have another like two or three kind of electronic songs. And then we'll start diving into the folk stuff after that. So I, I nice. just, I Damn, you. a lot of music. Yeah, you've been like at it, huh? Yep. <laughs> like have during quarantine too, you've been recording or no? Actually during quarantine, I have been, I, I came up with this idea that I like wanted to start a lifestyle brand. Yeah. Uh, like which is what this hat is. I was looking um, at that before. I was going to ask you. It's really, it's cute. Little thanks. heart, yeah. yeah. That's what you made that? Yeah. Nice. So it's called, it's called For Me, For Everyone. For um, Me, For Everyone. I love yeah, that. And, and the idea is like, I really, I really wanted to make, and I really want to make and have a vehicle in which to like spread joy and positivity. Yeah. And essentially the idea is like each item is like a token or reminder to be the best, happiest, most unique version of yourself. Um, so like everything is like really light and airy and like I have like a sweatshirt like with doves on it. And like I made like a tote bag that's just oh, like let me see. Yeah, let so, me see. So sunny. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, that's it's like a beach bag. All right. Well, this is Opus Vitae. And it's been so nice to talk to you. Um, can't wait to hear your new album coming out. Um, and I've really enjoyed hearing your stories behind your songs. And Opus Vitae, you have to look. So Instagram, you're at Opus Vitae. And yes. Facebook, at Opus Vitae. Yes. No one else has that. What do I mean? It's you. And Just then me. opusvitae.com. Yeah. Oh, I think it's opusvitaemusic.com. Yeah. Easy enough. Opusvitaemusic.com. Yeah. Google. Put that in right there. Yeah. Well, this was awesome. I am really happy to talk to you, and I think you're really cool, and your music's awesome, and I can't wait to see more. Awesome. Yeah. Super. A, a lovely chat. It's fun yes. to talk to a person. <laughs>